here in the sight of Almighty God and in the presence of all these witnesses plus one witness in heaven to join together Adrian and Micah in the bonds of holy matrimony. We are here to witness the miracle of God's love and the power of the Holy Spirit to join these two into one. Commit this time to the most important person in this room, our one true God. Lord, we thank you that you are God Almighty. You are sovereign. God, we thank you for this opportunity to bring glory to you in marriage, in the celebration of family. And God, more than anything else, we thank you for your manifest presence that we feel and experience right now. Thank you that you are God with us. Lord, again, we declare that you are the most important person with us today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all take our seats. <laughs> well, good afternoon. It's a lovely afternoon, not just for us here, but even for our guests online as well. No? And we have to remember that I believe, it is of my personal belief as well, that the heavens are rejoicing right now, mainly because I believe there is also a person in heaven who rejoices heavily and is witnessing whatever we're doing today. Now, Micah, Amy, Erin, and Matt, I believe you agree with me. Well, let me just start this off with a word of God. And I believe it is appropriate and rightful, Adrian, Micah, as you start your married life, to base it on the eternal word of God. No? But ito yung meron tayo ngayon. Okay lang ba? All right. Daddy Edwin, tingin ka dito. <laughs> Ito yung meron tayo ngayon. No? I'm not sure kung kita ng guests natin online. No? But this is what we are doing right now. What we don't want to do, or what we don't want to happen, is that itong mag-asawa, ito yung mararamdaman nila. All right? Ito. Okay? We don't want you to feel this way. In fact, minsan kasi, if you feel this way, this is what you might do. Which I believe we know people who called it quits in their marriage. 
And we don't want them to do that. In fact, what we want to know is to how to make this marriage strong. And that's the concern of anyone getting married. The parents of people who are getting married as well. What will make this union last? What will make it strong? In the world, there are many concepts, opinions about it. For the world, for the most of it, it's about love and feelings. Nothing wrong about romance. Well, you know, my kids, I want my kids to be swept off their feet as well. Adrian, you should... I'll remove my pastor's hat and I'll put on my Tito Jansen hat. Tito Jansen hat. Well, I'm also Tito Jansen to you, though. But if... And Ninong Papala. Ninong Papala. Yeah, I forgot that. But I'll put on the Tito hat of Micah. I want you to sweep her up her feet all the time. Just love and fellowship. We know a lot of people who got married excited. But then again, after a few years, they're excited to go out of marriage as well. So is it just love and feelings? For some, it's about aesthetics. It's about keeping that figure. It's about maintaining that awesome and marvel aesthetically how you look in the fear that a time will come when wrinkles set in when our muscles and our skin would be flabby baka hindi na ako mahalin ang asawa ko some people depend on that that's why they work so hard no? on their aesthetics some people think that it's about finances to keep this marriage strong we have to be financially on top so that we can enjoy the comforts of life para hindi tayo mamomroblema I remember quite unfortunate I did one wedding I thought everything was good until towards the end doon sa personal commitments and I'm excited to hear your personal commitments to each other the wife suddenly said and it's towards the end no sabi ng wife I'll do everything I can in the home. Everything you want me to do. As long as you bring that money home as well. Oh man, it bled my heart. Is it really just about money? In and of themselves, there's nothing wrong with all these things. Feelings and looking good and being fit. And of course, being blessed by God so that you can be a blessing to many. But is it, but is it what will make marriage strong, what we're going to do is to, at least, even in this short ceremony, understand the very essence of marriage, and we'll take it from the Word of God. The Bible says, in Genesis 2.24, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and wife father and mother, and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. We all know this story. You know this story. From Kids Church, pa, you know this story. That God created everything. Everything was good. And then, at the end of all his creation, he created humanity, man and woman. But it did not stop there. God created marriage and family. And from that narrative, we can understand the first basic essential, yeah, that word, no? Important yung word na yun, bukod sa lugaw, no? Essential principle of marriage. Marriage is from God. Marriage is from God. It is not man's idea. Man's idea is love. And again, it's good. But if it were just love, then it will not be sustainable. Later on, we'll see. But because it is God who initiated, who thought of marriage, He created marriage and family, then it can be sustainable because it is from Him. Well, the, the, we see principles in this world, and by the way, it is, they are vastly different from how God designed marriage to be. I'll give you one basic example, Adrian and Micah. Today, people opt to do trial unions. Try muna natin. 
Subukan muna natin. Baka hindi mag-work eh. But you see, it's very different from what you are doing today, day one. I'll explain why. First, it's about your posture in entering the marriage. In a trial union, people are thinking of themselves. I'm coming into this trial marriage, tri or trial union, trial living in. Because, just to be sure, I don't want to be hurt eventually. So they're coming into marriage thinking of themselves, right? But in God's biblical design of marriage, it's very different. Later on, you will exchange your vows. And this is what you will say. That I will, I promise from this day on to, that I will have you and hold you in in uh, sickness and in health, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, till death do us part. In that whole verse of vow, there's nothing about yourself. It is about the person that you will love. See, it's vastly different. Unlike in a trial union or a trial marriage, trial uh, living in, magkaibang magkaiba talaga. To sustain the marriage in a trial union, because you're thinking of yourself and the other person is thinking of herself or himself, then you are pressured to perform. I need to do good. I need to look good in this. I need to always bring home the bacon and the money. It's the pressure of performance. To sustain the marriage, you have to perform. But from a biblical standpoint, it's not about performance. Because God created marriage, the ultimate key to marriage is relationship with God. Imagine a triangle. I don't have a triangle now, but let's say you have an imaginary triangle. Adrian and Micah. God is on the top of the triangle. Yung dalawa nandun sa kabilang sides. The closer you are to God, the closer you are to each other, isn't it? Think about it. To sustain the marriage, because he is the designer of marriage, then key is to be close to the designer or creator. You come, Adrian, you come from an industry wherein you uh, print, uh, put on prints on t-shirts. No? I was talking about it with your father a while ago. Kinakamusta ko lang. Just to know how I can pray for you guys. Or let's say pre-pandemic. No? Pag yung customer nagka-problema, what will the customer do? Doon sa print. Will that customer go to the canteen beside your factory? Pag may problema yung print, hindi, di ba? Hindi naman siya yung nag-print eh. Kanino sila pupunta? Sa inyo mismo. Dahil kayo yung may alam nung tinrabaho nyo. Another example. Let's say I have this phone. This is my phone. And let's say for purposes of discussion, Nako, nagkaroon ng problema dyan sa silya ni Micah. At medyo, it's kind of wobbly. So let's say, Adrian, ayusin natin ito kagad. And then I gave my phone to Adrian. And what Adrian will do is to make my phone act like a hammer na para ma-stabilize lang yung silya. Ipapako niya ng ganon. Adrian, Micah, what will happen to my phone? It will break. Yes, why? Because the phone was not designed to act and be like a hammer. It was designed to communicate. In the same way, many marriages are broken. Many families are broken because they do not do how God designed marriages and families to be. And again, relationship with God. Sustaining the marriage. The attitude. Attitude. In terms of marriage, ibang iba rin. Why? Because in a trial union, the attitude is skeptical. People are coming into marriage, or meaning in that trial union, they're coming in thinking, I'm not yet totally sure about this guy or this woman, okay, I will just try it out. It's skepticism. But from a biblical standpoint, from a biblical marriage, you're coming into marriage committed already. Again, I'll go back to your vows later on. I promise to have you and hold you from this day forward for 
better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Meaning, day one, Adrian, regardless of how Micah will look 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, day one, you're telling Micah, I will love you no matter what. Micah, wouldn't you want someone who's committed to you day one? Hindi pa niya alam kung anong mangyayari 50 years from now. But he is saying, I will commit to you. That's the portrait. It's not about skepticism. In the same way, Adrian, wouldn't you want a woman? Day one is committed to give her life to you. Regardless of how much you will bring. Regardless of how you will look. Regardless of your future possible mistakes, and you will make mistakes, and I believe you, you know that, you both know that, you will make mistakes. But even with those, she's saying, I will commit to you, be devoted to you, I will give my life to you, day one. Biblical marriage. Why? Because marriage is from God. In that same narrative, God told Adam and Eve, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. And I want you to take dominion and spread my name all over the earth. It means that marriage is not just from God, but marriage is for God. It's more than just your love for each other. I mean, don't get me wrong. Love is good. Your feelings are good. Emotions are good. But it's not just about emotions. Through marriage, you will perpetuate humanity and you will fulfill God's purpose and advance His kingdom. Through marriage, imagine, there is, there is no such human relationship that will put two individuals into so close proximity to each other to the point that you will see each other's flaws. I'm sure ngayon may nakikita na kayo. O nga, no? Si Adrian, ganito. Or si Micah, ganito, no? Pag may sumpong. I'm sure. Pero guess what? Ayan, gumaganon si, ano, Mommy Margot. Dadami pa yon. You will see it more, no? But, but, because of that, you will respond nevertheless. Even if you see each other's flaws, you will still continue to love sacrificially, selflessly, and unconditionally. And when that moment comes, you would have realized that you had become more like Christ through marriage. Because it is more than just your love for each other. It is the glory of God. It is for His purpose. You will raise up a family and you will have children and they will have a pause. And these children of yours, just like you, will be discipled, should be discipled, Adrian. You will be the one to teach them the Word of God. You will be the one to teach them how to pray. You will be the one to teach them how to kneel before God. And when you do that, people all around you will see. Not because of you. But they will look onto your God and give glory to your God. And they will say, I want that God to be my God. Why? Because marriage is for God. Let me end it with this quote. And this is from a pastor who uh, was not able to marry his sister during World War II kasi nakulong siya for preaching the word. So what he did was to write down his sermon for his sister's wedding. And I'll give you an excerpt because he exactly speaks, talks about what we are, have been just talking about right now. That there is a vast difference from just the normal love of two individuals and marriage that is from God. And this is what he says. Marriage is more than your love for each other. It has a higher dignity and power for it is God's holy ordinance through which he wills to perpetuate the human race till the end of time. In your love, you see only your two selves in the world, but in marriage, you are a link in the chain of generations which God causes to come and to pass away 
for His glory and calls into His kingdom. In your love, you see only the heaven of your own happiness, but in marriage, you are placed at a post of responsibility towards the world and mankind. Your love is your own private possession, but marriage is more than just something personal. It is a status, an office. It is marriage and not merely your love for each other that joins you together in the sight of God and man. Love comes from you. Enjoy it. Embrace it. But marriage from above, from God. As high as God is above man, so high are the sanctity, the rights, and the promise of marriage above the sanctity, the rights, and the promise of love. It is not your love that sustains the marriage. But from now on, Adrian and Micah, it is the marriage that will sustain your love. Lord, we pray that your word will be deeply planted in our hearts, most especially, Lord God, in the hearts and minds of Adrian and Micah. And just as, Lord God, you said in your word that grass withers, flowers fade, but your word remains forever. Lord, let it remain with them and let it bear fruit. Thank you, Lord. All these things we ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this point, I'll ask Adrian and Micah to please stand and face each other. Adrian, do you take this woman to be your wife, to live with her in the covenant of marriage, to love her, to comfort her, to honor her, to keep her, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, and be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I do. Micah, do you take this man to be your husband, to live with him in the covenant of marriage, to love him, to comfort him, to honor him, to keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others and cling only to him as long as you both shall live. I really, really do. <laughs> <laughs> sure na sure yun, bro, ha? Talagang sobrang committed sa yun. At this point, as God is a covenant, a vow-making God, He is also a covenant or a vow-keeping God. This, at this point, is a very important portion of the wedding when Adrian and Micah would be exchanging their vows. So friends online and family here, let us witness, let us hear the exchanging of vows of Adrian and Micah. In the name of God, I, Adrian, take you, Micah, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. <laughs> in the name of God, I, Micah, take you, Adrian, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. This is my solemn vow. Adrian, Mike, I have to remember that you are making those vows, not just before each other, but you are making that commitment to God for each other. At this point, may now have the rings.
just as the rainbow is the sign, the constant reminder of the covenant promise that God made with Noah, these rings are signs of the covenant, the vows that you both made today. In uh, simple terms, Adrian Micah, ibig sabihin, pag nakikita niyo yung sing-sing niyo, it should remind you of the vows that you just declared before God, to God, and before us as witnesses. Micah, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am, with all that I have, I honor you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Adria, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow, with all that I am, with all that I have. I honor you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we now have the coins. The wedding coins symbolize Adrian Micah, that you recognize God as the source, your ultimate source. It symbolizes God's provision and God's prosperity. It also means, Adrian Micah, that you will not let fear or lack dictate your faith in God. It is of God's divine order, Adrian, for the man to take the responsibility of financial provision. That's why you have the coins right now. We've given you the coins and you are now in turn giving it to Micah to symbolize that. Adrian, you will make these commitments to your spouse. Micah, I commit to be a faithful provider, a responsible husband, and a hardworking father to you and our future children. I accept. we now have the veil placed on the couple. your head now is symbolic that you are now under the spiritual authority of Adrian. It should also remind you of your primary role to love Adrian and to submit to him. Adrian, the veil on your shoulders should serve to remind you of the cross of Jesus Christ on which the supreme sacrifice of God's divine love was offered mainly because Jesus loved His church. Be reminded, Adrian, of Jesus' primary role to love His church. He laid down His life for His bride in the same way. Love your wife and love your children with your life. May we now have the cord. cord is a symbol of the power of unity. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. 
Adrian Paika. The three strands in this cord of unity represent you, Adrian, Micah, and most importantly, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this point, you know, I believe even our guests online, they would like to give you gifts. But let me just say, the gift that we could give all of us would be our prayers for the couple. And so that's what we will be doing. So I'd like to invite the of the couple just to stand behind them. And then we'll ask them to pray. Lord, this is the day that you had made. Indeed, we are rejoicing. We are praising you. For Lord, you made this union possible, Lord. Apart from you, we are nothing, Lord. Lord, we thank you once again that as they honored you through their obedience, Lord, you, you bless them, Lord, with everything that, 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 that with everything, Lord, the best that you have to offer, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Bless this time. Bless this fellowship and union. All this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, thank you that you are faithful to fulfill your promises. We rejoice and celebrate your goodness in the lives of Micah and Adrian. May you always remind them that you are the center of their relationship and the one who watches over their future. Help them to serve the purpose that you have for them in their marriage. Guide them as they work together in their relationship, enduring through difficult times. I lift you up, my children, Micah and Adrian. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I thank you for this uh, marriage, this union that you have sealed, Lord God. Lord, we come to you in all humility, knowing that you are a God of favor. And God, we just speak your shalom, this marriage and over this whole family. Lord, we speak, Lord God, that they would deepen their relationship with you as they continue to grow in their marriage. Lord, they will grow in their love, in their passion for you and bring glory to you with, their, with, with the, their lives, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that, uh, Lord, we thank you that you have made this couple a mouthpiece, Lord. They will be one who would declare your purposes. They will be one who would declare your word to others, Lord. And God, we thank you that there's such an anointing of wisdom upon this couple. And yes, this wisdom will even overflow in their business and in their careers. But more than that, Lord God, you bless them to be able to advance your kingdom. It will be very unique and be very creative. But God, we thank you, Lord God, that people will know that you are God through everything that they are doing. And God, we thank you that this wisdom, Lord God, will give so much confidence to other people and make them look up to this young couple. Lord, we even thank you that they will begin to disciple couples older than them, Lord God. And God, we thank you that there's such an anointing to teach, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for Adrian that you've given him the gift, Lord God, of just an acumen, uh, an extraordinary gift in the area of business. But more than just for the finances, God, we thank you that he is one who will advance your kingdom mightily, Lord God. Thank you that there will be ideas that will come upon him. And these ideas are not just from him, that these ideas are coming from your spirit. So much so, Lord, that he, that you would open doors, Lord God. Not just doors of business and earnings and opportunities, but doors for him, Lord, to proclaim your gospel, Lord God, to a dark and an evil world. Lord, thank you for Micah. Thank you, Lord God, that this wisdom will be manifested, Lord, in wisdom to be able to grow children, Lord. Uh, disciple them as well. Teach them the Word of God. God, we thank you that you will continually provide and expand, 
Lord God, the opportunities that you've given Micah, even as a single person. God, we thank you that there is an expansion that is coming, Lord God. But God, it would even it would not even uh, take her time off marriage and time of children, but it would be something that will come with so much grace, Lord God. Lord, I seal this union in the name of Jesus. We declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and we declare your face, O God, to be upon them always, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. will ask uh, to remove the cord and the veil. Adrian, Micah, having pledged your faith in God and your love for one another by the exchanging of vows and the giving and receiving of rings, looking up to heaven and asking for divine sanction, and by the authority vested in me, by Victory Christian Fellowship and the Republic of the Philippines, I now pronounce you man and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let it forever remain sacred. Now that these two are married, kasal na, kasal na. Hindi pa, hindi pa, Edwin. Dad, mas excited pa daddy mo, Adrian, ha? Parang game na, game na. Hindi lang, hindi lang. Hold your horses, Daddy Edwin. No, but seriously, because they are now married, the first act of their married life would be to receive communion. Yes. This is a gesture declaring that this marriage will be based on God's finished work on the cross through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit.
before we finally seal this union with the most awaited portion, or one of the most awaited portion, the couple would like to honor their parents first. The Bible says to honor our fathers and mothers, and that's what they will do before they spend the rest of their lives together building the marriage that God has for them and the family. And then after that, they will also exchange their personal commitments to each other. I'll start, start with uh, no, my dad who's in heaven right now. Ako, hindi pa ako nagsisimula, Papa. Paano ba yan? <laughs> okay. Dad, I used to hate it when you'd get mad at me for not allowing me to have a boyfriend. When I really, really wanted to be with this guy, Dad, <laughs> I'd always defend in my head at least that it doesn't say in the Bible specifically we're not allowed to have, you know, relationships at this age. You were very strict about this, and I never fully understood why. But Dad, now I understand. You didn't want that for me because you knew I was settling and that God had the best waiting. Now I understand because this man I just married is better than the best I could have ever come up with with my limited knowledge back then. Now I understand that you were saving me for this moment. You were not only full of wisdom, pa, but you were also a man of many ways. You're actually the one who taught me kung ayaw may dahilan, kung gusto may paraan. And that line is just so perfect for you, Dad. I remember the story you told me when you were in the car, and wala na kaming pang tuition fee, and you were crying out, and you were just praying to God, God, paano yan? Then just at the right time, an opportunity rose from nowhere. Salesman ka na nga, pero kahit commercial, sinabak mo pa. But it was not starring in a TV commercial that you championed. You championed the timing of the Lord. I remember when you wanted to bring us so badly out of the country, but we were short on money. I big lang may piso sale. So you took the opportunity and you booked those flights. And true enough, the trip happened. We had a blast, and until now, I carry those memories with me. But it was not your ability to raise the money that you talked nonstop about. It was the ability of God to provide. I remember when you were asking us which medication we felt most comfortable for you to take after you found out that the cancer reoccurred. And we were in so much grief and pain to even make sense of what was at stake if we had made the wrong decision. But with so much confidence, you told us that it had very little to do with which medication we choose. But ultimately to you, it was about God's ability to heal that we needed to lock our eyes on the most. Even at your weakest, it was God's power and strength that you upheld. Pa, even though you are not here right now, your stories live on and it will continue to do so until we have children and they have children of their own. Thank you for leaving a legacy that was not full of you, but full of God. Lord, Please hug and kiss my papa for me right now. I love you so much, papa. I miss you.
Next. <laughs> Oops. Wait lang mo. My super duper mom. As a child, I always knew you to be the safe space. Every time galit si dad or sinusumpong ng init ng ulo, there you were, mom, ready to hug us and comfort us. And I will never forget that one time na umuwi kami ni Papa and it wasn't a good night for us because I fell face first on the street. Alam mo <laughs> I was crying so hard. But you kept on wiping my tears, planting kisses, while putting betadine on my sugat. <laughs> Fast forward 15 years later, you still are not tired of being my safe space. But my heartache, you're the first one I run to and hug. Lamo yan ma. Pagustong magsenti, I go to you, and you always get senti with me. Pagkailangan ko ng laughing buddy, I just go to your room and make you collect. Even if I pinch your tummy, I stare at you, or just do the most random things, you still entertain me. I want to honor you, Mama, because you've imparted to me a heart that loves wildly and is selfless to the core. I've never heard you gossip about other people. And when Achi, Matt, and I do, <laughs> You always stand as their lawyer, kahit hindi mo kilala, papaglaban mo pa rin. <laughs> You've never been one to treat yourself to expensive things because you'd rather just use the funds for your family or even other people other than yourself. And naalala ko pa before, we'd always push you to buy something nice for yourself, ma. Because the shirts you had were either from your dalaga days or gifted to you lang din. <laughs> and to this very day, your routine is wake up early to make food for the kids, clean the house, drive the kids around for their needs, get ready to work for the kids. And while you're working your first job, you're still trying your best to keep up with the other one. All for your kids, ma. And most of the time, when you realize that the food cooked for dinner was not enough, I'm new young guys. <laughs> Mama, you would prefer to not eat at all and just let us have your share kesa mabitin kami. <laughs> kind is an understatement when it comes to describing you. And wow, am I blessed that I grew up watching, serving, and being loved and taken care of by such a mom as you. Yes, you have such a beautiful face, but it is still your heart that I will forever champion about you. Thank you, mom, for teaching me the characteristics of a good wife, mother, friend, and daughter simply through your actions that I observed growing up. Now that I'm getting married, or now that I just got married, be assured that you will never stop being my safe space, my best friend. It only gets better from here, Mom. I love you so much more than you know. Love you. Yeah. Woo. In all honesty, I dreaded doing this speech. 
Okay. <laughs> I dreaded doing this speech because I know I don't know where to start. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, and Andrew. I can't even justify or just bring it in one speech. <laughs> Kaya hirap na hirap po, alam mo yun. <laughs> I tried to prolong it, to move it. Bukas na lang. <laughs> Itulog ko muna to. Just, I don't know how, and just to describe how thankful to have you, mommy and daddy, as my parents. I've seen you grow. I've seen your marriage. I have such a great example. <laughs> Daddy, I've seen your, your old self. I've seen the comparison of how God transforms a man. I've seen your smoking days, <laughs> your <laughs> all of those things that is we're, we're glad that is gone and is not here anymore. And I know for a fact that you love God more than anyone and anything in this world. And I see your countless times of of you spending the whole day as tanong nga ni Micah, paano, paano mo daw nagagawa yun? From the morning, to lunch, to merienda, to dinner, and even midnight snack. It's always you reading the Bible, doing your devotions, or kung hindi man, watching preaching on YouTube or Facebook. And I know in my heart that you've set a great example for me of how to be a husband, a loving husband, a responsible husband, and a child of God. Thank you for joining me in my sports and hobbies. You took the time and effort to bond with me over basketball, airsoft, biking, lahat yun, dami natin pinagdaanan. Favorite, pero favorite ko pa rin talaga yung airsoft days natin. Oh, marami pa. I mean, the fact that I played with my dad, actual war game uh, simulations, the best. You knew the risks and the dangers of the sport. Anytime I could get hurt, or even nangyari na nga, napagtripan, he didn't let it stop us from playing, but, in, it's, but instead allowed me to explore, learn, and have fun. He just made sure to be there and always to watch over me. Although it wouldn't be, with, be you without you grabbing the opportunity to reach to teach and to mentor me whenever you can. All the palalas, pag-ingat, pag-decide, and pag-iisip. You are my coach, my supporter, my teammate. And my strengths find their results. My second strongest attribute is my sense of responsibility. I definitely know where I gained that from. I saw how much ownership and responsibility you took to run Omni. You fought and fought and fought. You mustered all your strength and might to juggle everything around. Made sure we stayed afloat. You took all those years in. Tinago mo lahat, inako mo lahat, until pandemic happened. The past year is when I look up to you the most. You recognize that oh that overcoming challenges is not solely dependent on your own capabilities. As you described it, 
this is the ability to let go and let God. Thank you. Mommy, this is it. The moment you dread, but at the same time, one of your greatest milestones. Witnessing your tita and Uy get married. I always wonder how you make it work. Be able to run home and also run Omni. You manage both exceptionally well. Despite all the work, I've never, ever seen you complain. You handle everything graciously and with love. This is evident in the home that we live in and you've nurtured and in your relationship with all our staff members. Love na love ka talaga nila. Up to the point na dahil one year na siyang di nakita, naiyak sila. Ate Maya, alam mo yan. I have experienced your unconditional love for our family. Your total bed rest to ensure Andrew's full-term delivery. Yung alaga and service for Mama Boots in her last years. The work you do just to bring, oh, bring in work for make art. Your patience with Daddy. <laughs> Yun, yun, above all. I know you are capable of this unconditional love because you get it from the source himself. You anchor yourself with the word and your actions just overflow of God's love for you. I am grateful to have a mom as beautiful, as talented, as loving, and patient like you. For you both, I'm thankful you guys raised me with openness. I admire how you always listen to my ideas. Na minsan nga, sinasabi ni Maika, alam mo, parang masyadong bilib na bilib sila sa'yo. Parang bilib. Sabi, na lagi nilang pinapakinggan mga sinasabi mo, mga ideas mo. They, op they embrace it with open arms, and I appreciate that. Really thankful for for may mga problems tayo. Tatanungin nyo rin ako. Kakausapin nyo ako. Ano ba intingin nyo? Ano ba intingin mo? How does how does God view it in your perspective? And you guys exposed me in what real life is all about. Yes, you try to shield me from the things that you can, but you guys acknowledge that eventually we'll get here and I'll be out in living in the real world. The struggles, the challenges, you made really guys made an effort to teach me as much as possible. You have equipped me very well. Daddy, mommy, I love you and I appreciate all the things you've done and sacrificed for our family. I want you to know that I am so, so, so proud of you. I love you guys. Tito Edwin. <laughs> I've always wondered, uh, sinabi ni Adrian, how you manage to listen to preachings and the gospel in the background while you're doing your daily tasks. I don't even remember a time where I visited you and you did not have some sort of video or audio playing na devotions. Sometimes I think, siguro sobrang lapit na ni Tito Edwin sa heaven. <laughs> You know, but kidding aside, I admire how much time in a day you soak in the Word of God. It is beautiful to see someone who is so strong, yet so willing to be vulnerable and open when it comes to deepening your relationship with the Lord. 
Tito Edwin, everyone knows how tough you are. Even me at first, I thought you were so nakakatakot. Lalo na crush ko na si Adrian nun. <laughs> Maybe some people that know you from afar may even think that you're so uptight and masungit. But no, you are so tender, loving, and caring in your own ways. In fact, the day I met you, you cut a Zesto pack for me so that I could drink it. But I didn't even have to ask you. You just offered it to me. Sabay tanong mo sa akin, ikaw ba yung kaibigan ni Adrian? <laughs> and from that encounter, I am so glad that our relationship bloomed. I got to see sides of you that I know you wouldn't show to just anybody. You welcomed me with open arms. In fact, ikaw yung parating nagjo-joke and pinaka-excited about Adrian and I getting married. <laughs> Even before we got engaged. I admire you in more ways than one. You are a father who is very eager to provide for the comfort of your family. You may not be the most comfortable at expressing yourself through your words, but you've never ceased to show your love through your actions. You are a proud son of Angkong and Ama. You always light up when you talk about them, which just shows, which just shows how you honor them. You are an effective leader. I know this for a fact because I've married your son, who is a product of that leadership. And I can go on and on, Tito. But to wrap it all up, and to be honest with you, I've missed calling the name Dad. No, Dad Erwin may not be present for that anymore. But I'm so glad that after six years, you're the other dad that I'm getting. I love you, Tito Edwin. Dad Edwin, na. <laughs> Tito Margo, now my mommy Margo. <laughs> You are a picture of a strong woman. I think of all you have gone through as a mother, and it always amazes me how graceful you've remained. You're also so strong in your convictions, beliefs, and values. People have tried to rock you, but you are so deeply rooted. It seems that whatever the enemy throws your way, you are never shaken, for you are assured by the core of your foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Because of how you willingly surrender all sides of yourself to God, I see how that translates to who you are. Firstly, you are a reliable friend. You almost never have time because you're running a household and a business side by side, but you still always make time to show that you are there for them. Secondly, you are a submissive wife, one who eagerly helps Dad Edwin through the most rocky paths without even being asked to do so. You've taken the spot of being his most suitable helper with arms wide open, happily being the light in Dad Edwin's life and pointing him back to God at times he loses his control. Thirdly, you are a loving mother. Apart from the fact that you never complain, even if the five dogs give you a hard time sleeping, <laughs> you also never complain to serve your sons, even if you have a hundred things on your plate. Even to me. Kahit hindi mo pa naman ako daughter noon, you never made me feel like others ako. I was always welcome. I was always a part of the family. In fact, when Adrian and I got engaged, Every time I was in your house, you would take me around and show me everything you're going to give us. Oh, sa inyo na yan. Gusto mo yan. Sa inyo na. Meron ditong maganda. Baka gusto po. And on top of it, you always answer my thank yous with para sa mga anak. I am honored to be your daughter. And so honored that you've entrusted me to be a wife to your son. Dad Edwin, Mommy Margot. My husband is a mixture of all your best qualities. And I thank you for raising him the way that you did. Never by your guidance alone, but always by God's. I look forward with so much peace and excitement to be a part of the Oi family. Kasi kayo yung magiging family ko. I love you both. Let's go.
All right. I'll start with your dad. Peter Irwin, I could still remember the time when you came over and had dinner at home. We actually had some short conversations together. That night was memorable because Oreo convinced you and Mom Amy to get a dog as well. It was the arrival of Max, the supposed boyfriend to be of Oreo. Kaso, hindi nga yung aso yung nagkatuluyan. Yung mga anak pala. I'm thankful for having that brief moment with you. A glimpse of you. Sabi ko ka kay Micah, and with all confidence, sa tingin ko magkakasundo kami. If only I could ask God to let you stay and have you here with us. And I know that's for a different topic and His plans and purposes for us are far greater and far better. Wouldn't just it be amazing to know more about you, to hear from you, and have you as my dad too. Although, I'll still be able to catch pieces of you from Micah, from Erin, from Matt, and from Mom Amy. I know you're so proud of your daughter. I know you love her, and I know you care for her so much. From here on out, I'll be cheering her on. I'll be supporting her in her hostings and in her gigs. I'll be taking a lot of photos and a lot of videos for her, of her, just like you did. Tita Amy, I can call you now, Mom. Thank you for being so masikaso whenever I visit. I remember the early stages namin ni Micah. Na... Ang request mo sa kanya is magbigay kami ng early notice sa iyo na pupunta ako. <laughs> Bawal yung biglaan. <laughs> it's so it's just so you have time to prepare. Fix the house and cook food. This was especially evident I sorry, ever since you made me feel welcome. This was especially evident on the day I met you to discuss my plans to propose. You embraced the news joyfully and lovingly. Talking to you about the proposal felt so pleasant and natural. Grateful for making me part of your family. Mom, I, me, and Dad Erwin, thank you for raising such a beautiful, kind, and loving daughter. I'll take good care of her. Love you, Mom. September 10, 2016. It's been four years and seven months since I, since I first asked you out. I remember when we met in Cafe Breton, and I remember having a good time with you over crepes and pasta. Pasta na hiningi ko after. <laughs> this was my first time ever to go on a date. And honestly, I felt awkward and was clueless on how dating actually works. As nervous as I was, I had one goal in mind, to lay down my intentions to you. Grabe, 19 ka pa lang nun. Medyo long shot since I didn't just ask you if I could pursue you, but I wanted to pursue you with marriage in sight. Let that sink in. First date. Only three weeks of getting to know each other, and we were both in, still in college. 
when I was talking about getting married, I feel so ahead of myself. Yet, as crazy as it sounded, God heard my prayers. You agreed and expressed the same desires. The in-between of now and then was filled with great memories with you. Movie dates, art exhibits, music festivals, starting careers together, and out-of-town trips with our families. It gave us a glimpse of how it felt if we were to get married. There were also a lot of imaginary plans and trips we thought we would have enjoyed together. Ideas which never saw the light of day. All because we did our best to stay away from temptations and set aside plans until it's finally the right time. It was very limiting, but we made our setup work. Ironic how things panned out, I needed a pandemic to make me rethink my priorities and convince myself that it was actually time to take that leap of faith. I assessed my thoughts and feelings, and I acknowledged that there was peace that surrounded both my heart and my mind. It was a God-given peace that, is, that isn't dictated by abundance or lack. The Lord, in His vast wonders and greatness, used a seemingly disaster of a year to silence all the busyness and bring out what truly matters. While everything is in disarray, I was, am, and will always be certain of you. I would like to honor you, Micah. You have been such a blessing to my life, more than you know. I admire your heart full of compassion and grace. You have imparted me, imparted much of that in me. You taught, to, you taught me to be kinder and to be more understanding, never to act in anger, never to judge anyone. You, of all people, know my struggles and insecurities. You're brave to correct me whenever I'm wrong. You always know the right, right areas. know the right words to say and their areas to point out. I've been a better version of me since being with you. Thank you for continuously keeping me and our relationship in check. I know you do everything with love. You are a woman of God and that is what I admire about, most about you. You seek Him first and love Him more than anything or anyone. It resonates through your personality, your character, and your values. I can't ask anything more. I'm so proud of you. It's such a blessing to have a strong, beautiful, and loving woman by my side. And now, you're my wife. Faithful is he with his promises. For years, we've yearned and prayed for this very moment. No more sad goodbyes whenever I bring you home. We are finally home. You and I are standing right here, right now, seeing our hopes and dreams begin to unfold. Michael Luis, I'm ready to start life with you. As Mama Boots would always say it, I love you, todo, todo, without. I love you. Dan, a little before I met you, I believed that finding the right guy was impossible. I no longer had the heart to even look because I felt like no one would be respectful enough, loving enough, even loyal enough. I was hopeless and bitter and my heart was just not in the right place. But God's timing couldn't be more perfect as he always has been all my life. I found someone who overwhelms me with love, someone who forgives endlessly, someone who is ever patient and kind, someone who was always there waiting for me to put all my guards down. I was pointed back to Jesus. During that time, it was a different, more genuine relationship with Him, unlike before. 
And just when I was satisfied and I was no longer looking, I was blessed with a friendship that I easily consider the most tangible form of God's grace in my life in you. Truth be told, I was head over heels for you being so cute, quiet, and mysterious. That's what reeled me in. But it was your character that kept me wanting to get to know you better. In fact, our friendship bloomed rather quickly, like you mentioned earlier, three weeks to be exact. But, but they were more than enough for me to learn to love every side of you. Dan, you are so patient. What really made me admire you the most was when we were in fully booked in the Labang Town Center. We were chatting with our friends and somehow the conversation led to the topic of romantic relationships. You told us that you've never been in a relationship because you were waiting until you knew for sure that the girl you're getting to know could be your wife. You were also incredibly respectful. Every time you would visit the house, you wouldn't get down from your car until my mom was there. I would always say, okay lang yan, wala naman tayong gagawing hindi pa dapat. But you remained very stern out of your respect for me, my mom, and of course, your parents. You are an obedient son. You literally do everything for your parents without complaining. You serve them without asking, without telling them to wait, you just do what you have to do. And that's just how you love that. These characteristics of yours easily flow to your work ethics, your self-discipline, your faith, and the list goes on. So much of the best parts of who I am now is because of you. Tan, the most important phone call I've ever made in my life was when I was fresh out of college, there was an employer who made me a really great job offer. And the first thing I did was to step out of the room for a while to call you. And I was already thinking of getting the job, but somehow, God impressed in me to call you first before taking the leap. And that phone call awoke an undiscovered talent in me that God is now using to inspire young women through the platform that he has blessed me with. And through the years, I can only honor your leadership for bringing out the best parts of me I did not even know that I had. Dan, you know well that it wasn't always sunshine and dandelions getting to where we are. There were a lot of storms, some almost causing us to give up. But you, you always kept fighting. When the rubber would hit the road, that's when you would muster up all the reasons to love more, persevere, and to be more patient, and to latch tighter to the source of love himself. Thank you, for it is because of your leadership that we're here now in this moment. We're finally here, Dad. You know how much we love staying up on the phone. But I'm so excited to finally put our phones away and say good night and good morning to each other face to face. You know how much I hate it when I see you leaving the house after you visit. But now we will share a home with and in each other. At long last, We'll be able to watch movies while cuddling, kiss, and do everything with the doors closed. <laughs> and we'll also be able to do everything else that we've always wanted to share with each other. From this day forward, I promise to love you even on days I feel like I don't want to anymore. I promise to support you in your passions, possible career changes, in lack and in abundance. I promise to comfort you through times of distress and brokenness, to be graceful and kind to you when you make mistakes, giving you room to process and grow from all of them. I promise to point you back to God in moments you might be carried away by the world. I promise to learn to love the things that you love, even if I may not like them very much. I promise to be the most suitable and faithful helper to you, serving you with the best of my abilities. I promise to always choose God 
so I can choose you. Bobby, I'm still in this belief that this day has finally come. But this is not an end. In fact, it is only the beginning. A few minutes in, I'm already loving being Mrs. Oi. <laughs> Mrs. Adrian Oi. <laughs> I can't wait for us to start our journey. I love you so much, my husband. Adrian, because you and Micah are now husband and wife, standing as one before God and before one another, you may now kiss your wife. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great joy that I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Adrian Uy. Our ceremony has ended. God bless you all. My prime. But I was naked dressed in my pride. the signing of the contract lang po before we proceed with the group photos. Yet still saying be yourself you'll turn out alright You made me run like I never run Try like I never tried
Is this the live stream? Hi, this is hey guys! Hi guys! We're married! <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, thank you guys for um, coming to our wedding online! <laughs> Wait, actually, Lolo, I love you. You know, dapat nandito ka, pero siempre safety mo muna. Ang kung! Siang I love kong. you! <laughs> Hello, mommy. Mommy, my mommy, mommy of mom, mommy Zenaida, love you. Sino pa ang dami? All of our ninongs and ninongs, yeah. our ninang ging, di ba? Who uh, should have been here with Tito yeah. Johnson? Ninang Bambi, ninong, ninong Sunny, all the way from the states. Diko, Diko, si Ate Tin, Kuya Edre, Tita Shirley. Tito Ariel, Tito Larry, Tita Yet, Tita Michelle, Tito Tony Boy, Tita Michelle, Tita Yen, Tito 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 Yen, <laughs> yeah, thank you, you guys for joining for watching. Your live stream. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. What? Photos. Oh, All right. Here, Anna, no, come in the lobby. Kasi parang, di ba, remember, um, actually, they told us na yung Ninong Ninang is just a... A title. It's just a title. Eh. Kaya ano talaga yun eh. Mommy, daddy, mga yun eh. Um, to, ano, Tita Tess. Mommy, Tess ko na yan. Um, daddy George and Daddy Conrad. And... Kaya ano eh. Kaya hindi yan na na. Kaya mo yan. Love you guys. Alam nyo. Hindi na ni nung ni nang eh, mami daddy na kayo. Love you guys. You lang. So I'd say that. <laughs> I hope they're still on. Yeah. Alright, thank okay, you. Thank you guys. <laughs> okay, game. Okay, let's take photos. One lang, hold on. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Anne. Selfie. Yeah.